This place is from far my favorite in Addis. It's a small piece of paradise. It While I was on the plane on my way to Ethiopia, I fell upon this article talking about how Addis was a pioneer in sub-Saharan Africa in green infrastructure. Paris has its Coulee Verte, New York has its High Line, and Addis has or is going to have this river basin development project. It is a gigantic project of 52 kilometers long, covering all the rivers of the city. The goal is to create a beautiful and healthy environment for the citizens of the city as well as tourists. It will feature many open spaces for recreation, such as uh, bicycle lanes or walkways, but there will also be an artificial lake and a wedding venue. So the project is really going to enhance the well-being of citizens of Addis Ababa. Nowadays the rivers are used as dumping grounds, so they are really dirty and really polluted. So this project is really going to improve the lives of the people living on the side of the river, but also the people living downstream. This is a very important initiative to clean our rivers, because these rivers are affecting a lot downstream. The farmers and the agricultural population are around the fringes of Addis. Right now the government is uh, working on the first phase of the project, which is about 12 kilometers, and this will be finished by May 2020. So it will be at the end a green path crossing the whole city. So now many areas of the country are trying to replicate this model of uh, cleaning the rivers. It is a very hopeful trend in solving the problem of clean water in rivers. Now let's do a bit of history to understand the context. Ethiopia has been isolated for a very long time and it is just now opening to the world. So there is a really big economic growth and in consequences there is this really late uh, rural to urban migration that is happening right now. So the population in cities is exploding. The urbanization in Addis Ababa is going faster. Uh, it's not very much planned, uh, as we can see, because the rate of urbanization and the rate of economic development that we have uh, is not in the balance. In Addis Ababa, you see a huge contrast. Uh, you have uh, high-rise buildings, and uh, at the same time, you have a large area with uh, slum. Addis for a very long time was expanding horizontally, putting pressure on agricultural land in the south of the city and forest as well. You know, Addis Ababa is found in the center of an area of agricultural potential. In fact, the area around Addis is very important for growing the most important staple food in the country, air. So naturally, Addis Ababa is encroaching too the agricultural land areas. But nowadays the trend has changed and the center is densifying, so we can see many high-rises popping up all over the city. So this race to densify the center is putting urban green spaces at great risk, so it's getting more and more important to protect them. An area that is really endangered are the mountains close to the city center. Until now they have been quite untouched, but this is changing. The other problem, uh, which is coming as a result of uh, population increment in the urban setup in Addis Ababa is encroachment to the uh, mountains, for example. Addis Ababa to the north is in fact circled by a mountain range. The Addis Ababa Botanical Garden is a very good example of conservation of the green belt and a very successful project. It is located on the surrounding mountains and was open on January last year. Since then, it became highly popular among residents. It is used for leisure, people are going there hiking, they are going to receive yoga lessons, but it is also used for educational purpose. It is a way to raise awareness on the importance of nature, and especially forest in urban settings. When I went there, I was very surprised how beautiful it was and how well maintained it was. For now, we have seen projects implemented by the government. But the people are starting to realize the importance of green spaces in the city. And they are taking actions. They know how pollution is affecting their health and they know how the lack of green spaces is affecting their lives. 
the neighborhood themselves are taking care of whatever space is available around them. Even through their own initiative, their own plantation, their, their own land use plan, both biological and physical conservation, they are working on it. So this is a very important intervention because this will be much more sustainable. Because when people take the initiative by themselves, with full awareness, with full interest, and with full knowledge of the results that can come as an outcome, that is much more sustainable. One project I love is the Zoma Museum. It is like entering in a paradise, in an oasis, in this big city. It is a privately owned complex in the capital, on the side of the river, that mixes traditional Ethiopian vernacular architecture and an edible garden. The owners bought the land in 2005 when it was a dumping ground and it took at least one year to clean it. And it just opened officially last year in March. The museum is showing temporary exhibition and the garden is serving as a leisure area as well as an educational space. They cultivate herbs, vegetables, plants and fruits. And there is also a desire of conservation where they cultivate endangered species of plants. They use traditional methods for irrigation as well as cultivating and everything is done organically. They also have a school that was included in the whole complex when they bought it, they renovated it and now the school has its own garden for educational purpose and its own kitchen. Even if it's a private space, they try to keep the price affordable. It's even more affordable than some public parks in the city. If you pass by Addis, it's definitely a place to check out. But all these private initiatives need to be supported by the government, by those responsible of uh, land use and physical planning. The government needs to encourage initiatives such as this one, that turn spaces in green areas, so they don't disappear. Once they have taken that initiative, unless it is, uh, unless they have the title deed, the right of land to use it properly, they can be discouraged. So one very important element is that the city administration has to encourage initiatives that have been taken by neighborhoods to have some space around them and again to just convert it to green area, even for their children. For 20-25 years, the government is starting to address the environmental issues properly by having an institutional mechanism. The government is trying to address these issues at a higher level with necessary policies and strategies and legal setups. Since 2002, environmental policies are part of the country's constitution. This shows that the government is taking the issue seriously. But the problem is, is in enforcing it. So maybe we uh, a lot of work to be done by way of attitudinal change, capacity building, awareness creation, which is being done now with the support of the international community and with the meager resources that the country has also. The government is trying to create the necessary awareness with regards to environmental protection, uh, abating the problems of pollution as well. So now, uh, if you go to the communities, there are a lot of uh, uh, forums and uh, extension work to enhance environmental protection measures down at grassroots level. And institutional mechanisms are being established. Legal mechanism is already put. So the future will be, in fact, better. Better. Soon it will be better. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, there is so much more to say. Addis is not perfect. There are many things to improve, but the trend is very encouraging. Addis is a model in uh, green infrastructure in sub-Saharan Africa, so it's very interesting. So this is the last video of this whole year, of this whole project. So I would like to thank uh, all the friends that uh, helped me in these videos, all the people that participated, that are interviewed, all the organizations that believed in me, people who helped me to finance the trip, uh, my sponsor, Aquarel. Thank you very much and see you next week. Bye.